Hi all, welcome back. So today we will be seeing the unbounded solution. This is one type of solution that we will get when we solve for a linear programming problem, okay, LPP problem. So we will solve this by using the graphical method, okay. Over here we have the LPP that is given, okay, we have the objective function max z is equal to 3x1 plus 4x2 and we have subject to the constraints x1 minus x2 is equal to minus 1. Okay, and the second constraint is minus x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 0. We also have the non-negativity constraints that is x1 and x2 which is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so if you uh, just um, check over here, we have the first constraint which is an equation. Okay, over here we have an equal to. Second constraint we have less than or equal to. This is called as an inequality. Okay, so before we solve for a graphical method, we need to convert all the inequalities into equations. Okay, but over here the first constraint it is already given as an equation. So we don't have to change that. Okay, we'll just write down the first con constraint as such and then we'll solve for two points so that we can draw the line on the graph corresponding to the first equation. Okay, so we'll start over here answer okay the first one we have uh, first constraint is x1 minus x2 which is equal to minus 1 so for getting the points to plot on the graph we have an easy method that is put x1 equal to 0 in this equation okay so we have 0 minus x2 which is equal to minus 1 so minus x2 is equal to minus 1 x uh, minus and minus cancelled we have x2 is equal to 1 okay so we have that point when x1 i put as 0 i have x2 as 1 so this is the first point for drawing the graph okay we need to get one more point for drawing the graph corresponding to the first constraint here so for that just substitute put x2 is equal to 0 in this equation okay in this equation just put x2 is equal to 0 so i have x1 minus instead of x2 I am putting it as 0 which is equal to minus 1 so I have x1 is equal to minus 1 okay so the point is when x2 is 0 x1 what I have got over here is minus 1 okay I am plotting uh, the point on the table this is the table corresponding to the first equation x1 minus x2 which is equal to minus 1 so these are the values corresponding to x1 this is corresponding to x2 so our first point what that we got over here is 0 and 1 so 0 over here 0 and 1 second point is minus 1 and 0 so minus 1 and 0 okay so for drawing this uh, constraint on the graph we have already got two points okay so next we'll move on to the second constraint okay so over here I am writing this as the first constraint and this one as the second constraint. Okay, so for solving the second constraint we need to replace the inequality by the equation. Okay, so here replace inequality in the second, second constraint by equality. Okay, so we have minus x1 plus x2. So instead of this inequality, I am writing it as 0 here. Okay, so uh, similar to the first constraint, we need to get two points for uh, plotting this constraint on the graph. Okay, so I am putting put x1 is equal to 0 in this, equa in this equation. So I get minus instead of x1, I put it as 0 plus x2 is equal to 0. So what I get is x2 as 0. Okay. So when I put x1 as 0, I get x2 as 0. Okay. So usually we uh, for getting the second point, we used to put x2 as 0. So but in this case, that is pointless. Okay. It is meaningless because even if we put x2 as 0, we are going to get x1 as 0. So we don't have to put x2 as 0 again. Okay. For getting the second point. So we'll just take some other random number. Okay. And put it for x2. Okay, for example, put x2 is equal to 4. Okay, I'm just taking any random number, uh, x2 is equal to 4 and then I'm going to substitute the value in this equation here. Okay, so it comes minus x1 plus instead of x2, I'm putting a random number 4. Okay, is equal to 
0. Okay, this one 0. So I get minus x1 is equal to when I take this 4 to the other side, I get minus 4. Okay, when I cancel both minus on both sides, I get x1 is equal to 4. Okay, so when I put x2 as 4, when I put x2 as 4, I am getting x1 also as 4. So the point is 4, 4. Okay, just check the constraint here. This was our constraint. Okay, I am just going to change this. I am taking x2 to the other side, to the right hand side. So I get minus x1 is equal to when x2 goes to the right hand side, it becomes minus x2. When I cancel both um, negative uh, symbols here, okay, when I get cancel both, I get x1 is equal to x2. Okay, so can you see over here x1 equal to x2. So that is why when we put x1 as 0, we got x2 also as 0. When we put x1 as 4, we got x2 also as 4 because the constraint is actually both are tells the constraint actually tells both the variables are going to be the same. Okay, x1 and x2 are the same. So that is why 0, 0 are uh, one point and uh, 4, 4 is the other point. Okay, I'm just writing it in the table below. This is corresponding to the second constraint. Okay x1 and x2 when i put x1 as 0 i got x2 as 0 similarly when i put x2 as 4 i got x1 also as 4 okay now we have got all the points for uh, plotting the constraints on the graph okay so this is our graph we'll plot the points on this graph okay for the first constraint and for the second constraint okay so this is our first constraint we have to plot 0 1 and minus 1 0 okay so first we'll plot 0 and 1 Okay, 0 on x1 and 1 on x2 axis. Okay, so we don't have to plot anything on the x1 because it is 0. Okay, for x2, I'm, I'm putting the point 1 here. Our second point is minus 1 and 0. Okay, so we have to take minus 1 on the horizontal axis which is x1. I have to extend it further towards the left. Okay, so I'll do that now. So this is minus 1. This was our origin. Okay. Second point of the first constraint is minus 1 and 0. Minus 1 on x1 and 0 on x2. So 0 on x2 I don't have to plot any point there. So I'll just put a point here that is minus 1. Okay. Corresponding point of x2 is 0. Okay. On the x1 axis. So I got two points here corresponding to the first constraint. Okay. I'm drawing a line there. Okay, this is our first constraints line okay i'm putting it as one since it is the graph corresponding to the first constraint okay now we'll draw for the second constraint okay here we have the second constraint okay we have zero zero and four and four zero zero is our origin zero zero the other point we have taken is four and four okay so we'll get it over here okay we have to draw the two lines there Our point will be this one. Okay, this is going to be our point 4, 4. Okay, this is going to be our point 4, 4. So I'm going, I've got two points here. This is the first point, this is the second point. I'm going to draw the line. Okay, so this is the line that is corresponding to the second constraint. So I'm writing it as 2 there. Okay, now just check on the constraints. This is our constraints. We have the first constraint which is an equation. So this equation corresponding to this equation we just need to draw the line one line on the graph that will be sufficient but for the second constraint it is a inequality less than or equal to okay so what the meaning of this is this the graph is going to divide the plane into two halves the upper half and the lower half okay so based on this inequality that is less than or equal to we need to decide whether we have to shade the above region or the below region okay so this is the second constraint this is the line corresponding to the second constraint we need to decide whether we have to shade the above region okay this region or we need to shade the bottom region okay for that what we do is just by um, uh, seeing that it is a less than or equal to uh, inequality given in the question we can uh, go forward and shade the bottom region there is no problem but scientifically just to make sure that your answer is correct what we do is 
we just take down the equation the second constraint was minus x1 plus x2 okay less than or equal to 0 this was our second constraint okay so this was our second constraint okay i am going to take any point below this graph this is the second constraints graph take any point below the graph for example i am going to take 4 comma 0 4 comma 0 is a point below this graph okay 4 comma 0 i am going to substitute x1 is equal to 4 and x2 as 0 okay so minus of x1 is 4 plus x2 is 0 okay what is minus 4 plus 0 it is equal to minus 4 okay now just check with the constraint here minus 4 is it less than or equal to 0 yes, yes minus 4 is actually lesser than 0 okay less than or equal to 0 is the same thing so it is actually a true solution which means that 4 comma 0 is a solution to this constraint okay which means that we can take the uh, portion below the graph and then we can shade it because we took 4 comma 0 from below this graph 4 comma 0 was a solution to the constraint this means that we can shade the below region okay so in this case i'm going to shade the below region okay just take a, one more example i'll show just take a point above this graph above this graph we have a point here this is of the form 0 comma 5 okay i'm just substitute 0 comma 5 in the second constraint okay put 0 comma 5 okay 0 is x1 and 5 as x2 minus 0 plus x2 is 5 which is equal to 5 okay is 5 less than or equal to 0 5 is not less than or equal to 0 5 is greater than 0 okay so i cannot take the region above this graph because 0 comma 5 is not a solution 0 comma 5 is a point above the graph which is not a solution to this constraint so i cannot take the above region okay so the point 4 comma 0 is the solution to this constraint so i can shade the bottom region okay so i'll shade it okay i can shade this region okay now just see the uh, region that is shaded the graph that is uh, corresponding to the first constraint it does not divide the plane into any halves it is just a line because it was an equation given in the question okay the second constraint it is dividing the plane into two halves and we have to consider the lower region okay and we don't have any other constraint so that this convex region can be closed okay it just goes on till infinity i can shade till infinity okay what is the meaning of that the meaning of that is any point if i take on the left okay for example i am taking a point 5 comma 2 okay 5 here and 2 here i am taking 5 and 2 okay just substitute 5 and 2 in the objective function my objective function was max of z is equal to 3x1 plus 4x2 okay so my objective function was max of z is equal to 3x1 plus 4x2 just substitute this point 5 comma 2 in this i get put 5 comma 2 i get z is equal to 3 into 5 plus 4 into 2 which is equal to 15 plus 8 which is equal to 23 okay now just take a point further towards the right for example you take 9 comma 3 i have 9 here and 3 from here i'm going to take 9 comma 3 okay just substitute 9 comma 3 this is a point that is further towards the right hand side okay put 9 comma 3 in the objective function i'm just naming this as 3 okay so put 9 comma 3 in the constraint um, in the objective function okay i get max of z is equal to 3 into 9 plus 4 into 3 okay this is 27 plus 12 which is equal to 39 see our objective function is to maximize when i took a value 5 comma 2 i am getting the objective functions value as 23 when i took a point further towards the right 9 comma 3 okay i am getting it as 39 okay so when i take a point on the left side 
5 comma 2 I got a value 23 9 comma 3 further towards the right side which means further closer to the infinity 9 comma 3 is further closer to the infinity when I took a point that way I am getting an answer which is 39 okay it is our maximization question so we'll be taking our answer as the bigger value okay so 39 is bigger than 23 so we'll be taking 39 okay just take one more uh, point on the graph which is uh, i'll take the point um for example 12 and 5 okay 12 on the on the x-axis and uh, x1 axis and uh, 5 on the um, on the x2 axis okay put 12 and 5 okay put 12 comma 5 in equation 3 i get max of z is equal to 3 into 12 plus 4 into 5 okay which is equal to 36 plus 20 the answer is going to be 56 so did you understand i'm take i've taken a point further towards the right Okay, 12 comma 5 is further towards the right. 12 comma 5 comes over here. 12 comma 5 comes over here. See, the answer, the value of the objective function has increased. Okay, compared to all the other previous two values. It has become 56. Since the objective function is maximization type, which value will we take? We will take the value of 56 as our answer. Okay, so this goes on till infinity. Any point I take, I will get a better solution as the point which is on the right. Okay, again, I take any point 9,3. A better solution will be given by the point 12,5. Okay, on the right hand side, which is closer to infinity. Okay, 12,5 is further closer to infinity as compared with 9,3. Okay, that is why we say that this is an unbounded solution. Okay, the answer is actually infinity. Okay, answer is infinity. If you take a point on infinity, that is actually going to be the answer for this solution. Okay, so we'll just write the answer. Okay. Here, the solution space is... unbounded maximum value of z occurs at infinity problem has an unbounded solution There exist infinite number of points in the convex region for which Z increases as we move to the right side okay so this is going to be the answer for the uh, LPP okay so thank you so much